so Travis, we uh, we talk in the book about decision making. We also talk about transparency. Uh, maybe you could speak a little bit about why transparency is so important for effective decision making in an organization. Yeah, I really like the quote that we started the chapter off with from Keith Raboy, which says, if you want people to make the same decisions that you would make, uh, and, but in a more scalable way, they need to have the same information that you have, right? So there's so many times when leaders are asking the question, why isn't somebody else making that same decision? And nine times out of 10, it's because they don't have the, the same data that you have, right? The backstory or what's going on. And so the more transparent that we can make the, the data and more accessible uh, without overwhelming people, the, uh, the more we can up-level decision-making in the, uh, the organization, as well as building and enabling trust. And, and so, Susan, moving it to, to you, uh, where can organizations start making change in how they approach transparency when they want to lead together? I think that you get you 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 had a really nice lead in there around decision making. I think that that for me, the first thing that an organization can do because I, I I recognize that opening up the books or any of these other things re require also like a level of context. So it's all well and good uh, to open the books for everything everybody to see, but people don't have a basic level of like financial literacy to be able to read a PL, well, what's what's it for? But I think that on 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 an area that I think is super important and a really great place to start is being transparent about who makes what decisions and how those decisions are made. And I think that if we get that um, and we're able to be clear about that, then everything can flow from that. And you know, as I was saying, Brent about it, it, it can engender a tremendous amount of fear um, for leaders, especially traditional leaders with this invitation to make everything transparent. Um, what do you think those challenges are and, and, and are, they, are they real or are they, are they just vestiges of, of the old system? I think most of us will have some kind of example in our past where we shared something and it came back to bite us. And so, you know, the, the fear is an honest one. It comes from an honest place. And it often also gets overplayed uh, in, in organizations. And so um, there, there are certainly are some places where uh, confidential information needs to be protected. And so it, it could be information that a client has shared with us under, uh, a non-disclosure agreement and it has to be limited to a certain number of people that's a contractual obligation or personal information uh, that really doesn't need to be there's no benefit to sharing that uh, across the organization it really should be be kept um, uh, kept to just those roles that that need that information to to be able to do the to fulfill their accountabilities um, and there are a number of reasons why sometimes we keep things confidential uh, when in fact being transparent could be helpful. And so one of those reasons uh, that uh, I often hear is that uh, I, I don't know that people could handle the truth. Uh, going, going back to that famous uh, movie line, you can't handle the truth. And uh, so we, we often um, uh, don't give our colleagues uh, enough credit or the, uh, I don't wanna distract people. Um, you know, providing too much information is just gonna be distracting. And fair enough, there is some balance. If we just throw everything out there, then uh, it will be very hard for anybody to see the, the forest for the trees as the saying goes. Um, however, the tendency is that because we have these fears, we keep things more confidential than we need to. And so one of the sayings that we have in the book is, you know, when in doubt, share it out. Uh, so rather than the, the default tends to be when in doubt, keep it confidential, play it safe. And, um, and maybe the last thing to add in is that, you know, there, there's the possibility for some mistakes uh, to be made along the way. Uh, and to just watch for that, um, 
that sense of fear coming back up again and wanting to close the doors rather than just dealing with that particular situation as a learning opportunity uh, so that we can you know, correct and, and move forward rather than uh, you know, kind of locking the doors to all information. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll throw it over to you, Travis, then to, to talk about, so what are some of the tools if an organization you know, acknowledges that there's some fear, but says, hey, we wanna push through it anyway, we wanna be tr more transparent than we've been in the past. What are some ways that organizations can do that? I mean, there's so many tools. I think a lot of people are getting much more familiar with them uh, in these current times. And whether you're using uh, Google Drive or Google Docs or, uh, or Box to save and share files, or even Microsoft 360, um, or uh, project management and task management tools like uh, Trello, Asana, or Monday.com, or communication tools like Slack or Microsoft Teams. But the one I wanted to highlight that may maybe not on as many people's radar is tools around creating transparency around the decision making process. To to point out to to Susan's uh, idea that decision making and how decisions get made are really useful, and people don't realize how useful it can be to see what you were even what you were thinking yourself um, because even if you're just working alone you're still collaborating with three people your current self your past self and your future self uh, and so knowing that you're going to have that many people involved and then multiply that by the number of people in the decision checking out something like uh, lumio.org um, or cloverpop for decision making can be really useful. And both of those tools encourage you to follow some sort of useful uh, decision-making flow. And even thinking about that process tends to increase the quality of the decisions. So if you try something like that, definitely try it out with decisions that matter um, and that are gonna be useful to, uh, to revisit uh, as a trial run, but can be huge value over time.